YouTube. Welcome back to Axies and Allies, the Garrison. This is Detroit, your host, coming to you from the bunker here in Rose Show Park, New Jersey, along with my co-host, our Gargantua, who's coming to you from the Canadian Pacific Coast, from British uh, Vancouver, British Columbia. And this is, of course, another episode of Decoding Axies and Allies. And today, we're going to see if we can pull this off. Uh, we're going to uh, review Gargantua's sea lion strategy that he has used in the past very effectively against not only on the actual game board but also on triple a as a matter of fact gargantua is going to be using the triple a uh setup there so that he can show us how it is that he executes his uh sea lion strategy so once again guys welcome on board and uh gargantua uh you have uh, the floor Awesome. All right. Well, let me, uh, I'll pull up the screen here, guys, just to kind of show you. And, and first things, this isn't any specific strategy so much as it's just a how to do a sea line. Because a lot of people ask the question, well, how do I? And prior to how to, it's when to uh, is sort of the big question. Right. So uh, anyway, this is sort of G1. Nothing's happened yet. This is a standard setup of a standard global game. And again, if you're playing BBR, you're playing TG6Con or some other variant, um, you know, you're going to, have rules and regulations or whatever you're going to set it up to, to play that way um, but this is just the basics of how to run a very basic sea line and this example again is a little bit butchered yeah. uh, again just to sort of prove that this is how it should function um, and that'll, that'll give you what you need so these purchases uh, in terms of my favorite strategies uh, these days I like the three fighter build Germany uh, one the reason for that is used to be build you know you build a carrier you build a destroyer uh, and sub you can still do a naval build, uh, but a lot of people prefer the fighter build because the British response typically used to do an air base here, bring their navy over here, and then that would give them coverage of both Egypt and London. And by doing right. the three fighters, you now take away this ability because you'll have all your fighters in West Germany in the turn. The Italians can usually pick up Algeria and basically you can destroy the entire fleet. So that's that's what this is about. Um, you do your, your combats. These are all typical sort of battles uh, for Germany. And let's look at the end of the round here. Obviously, we won this battle, retreated, but the, the fighter had stayed there and, and survived. Um, we won off Canada, which is a big deal in terms of the sea line. And uh, obviously, we won in France after some losses. Uh, and there was one or two minor things. Like, I didn't use these forces. It was an error. It's not a reason, but anyway. Um, so anyways, this, you finish your sort of typical thing. The critical thing for if you want to play a sea line is you need to make $70 on Germany's turn. The best way to do that in the global map is you have to conquer Yugoslavia and you have to conquer Normandy. That boosts your income to the 70 bucks. Uh, and that's what you need to, to basically build your 10 transports the following turn. And your fighters are just as critical uh, in attacking uh, London, basically, on, on that turn. So that's turn one. Um, I ignored more or less America and, and Russia simply because they're not at war prior to the invasion. Uh, so let's go to the British response here. So the British were feeling cocky, basically. Okay, they, so re real quick, yep, the attack yep. off the coast of Canada where you're attacking the Allied fleet in 106. Yeah. Okay, you're attacking that with what? Two subs. Two, two subs. subs. Understood. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I always like two subs there. The reason is like those two infantry make a big deal because the, the basics of the equation on, on London is really not complicated. It's as simple as can I bring more units to bear than the allies. Understood. If you can get on, on G3, uh, if you can land, or not land, if you can get more units there, like if you can get 32 units there to their 28, you're going to win. And the reason is because the German units, they're, they're more powerful, and so they're sort of stacked in the back half, versus the allied units, obviously, they're losing infantry at two, where you're losing infantry at one. And so as soon as you cross the threshold of you've got one or two more units that are going to physically be there than theirs, you're going to win sea line more often than not. Obviously, the more you have to bear, the better. Now, this is the big sort of question. Whatever UK is going to do, if they build max for sea line, like you, you build 10 men, uh, you know, they clear up this zone to get more reinforcements there. You know, they don't Taranto, as they're going to do in this case. Um, then sea lines can be pretty much off the table. And you're going to know that on G2 because you're going to just do the count. How many guys can I get there G3 prior to how many guys he can get there uh, on UK2? That's going to answer the question of whether to sea line or not. It's as simple so as that. So the British must perform Toronto in order no, for... No, they don't, they don't have to. Because sometimes the British do other other things, right? Like they'll they'll try and attack this fleet sometimes. Okay. Uh, you know, I've seen guys land in France thinking that's going to do something. Um, you know, you'll you see some distraction go this way. 
Uh, I've seen other resources, you know, come down here. They, they sometimes still try and do the fleet anyway. Right. Uh, so it really, it, it really depends. Or sometimes guys will scramble on the first turn into the channel. Um, and and you know, there's all kinds of ebb and flow. Like on G1, did you lose planes here? Did you lose planes here? You know, did you win or lose this battle? And again, it all boils down to the simple equation of right. will I have more guys in London on G3 than them? And as long as I do, sea lines on the table, and I win, I can win it. So you have to perform a balance at the end of that round, yep. round one, and see if the numbers are actually right. in your favor. You have to do an equation. Correct. Right. One hundred percent. And that and that's the do I. And then if and then the rest of this video is basically how you do that, uh, which is which is pretty simple. So uh, anyway, so yeah, and, and a big thing too is it depends a lot on their purchase, right? Uh, a lot of you know if if a guy's just going to build an entire bunker in London, well, he's basically taking sea line off the table. You're going to build your eight or nine guys there. There's not much you can do about that, and chances right. are you're not going to get it. Of course, if he does that, then he's bottling all kinds of units up there. He's not making progress in Egypt or other places. So for the purpose of this example, we just sort of said, look, uh, you know, they went, they felt they were doing well. And so, you know, they did the Toronto thing and their purchase was kind of like a fighter, two guys and a, and a complex. Sometimes you'll see five or six guys, uh, you know, so, the, and they get the complex in Egypt. Some guys really like to get it out of the way the first turn. And again, this is a out of box uh, second edition. So there's no bid, um, but that's, you know, bids are very common in second edition, uh, you know, so just some things to consider. And again, it's just for the purpose of the example. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if you're reading C line, which is basically they didn't build max here and this has been drained out, like sometimes you'll cap this fighter early uh, or sometimes these fighters pull out uh, or the Toronto or whatever, if, you, if that's, that's gonna tell you I'm reading C line and I'm gonna try and do it. That takes you to Germany too. So in Germany too, you've got to take a look, you know, these guys did manage to win this battle of Canada. Sometimes they don't, they come here and they lose and then their transport can't get anywhere. Those two infantry uh, or four infantry, depending on, on how this thing's gone, makes a huge difference uh, in terms of what you can get there to bear at the end, right? So <clears throat> anyways, just G2, this is decision time. You decide I'm doing it or I'm not doing it. So we did the math. The math is I'm going to have more guys in London than he's going to have, so I'm going to do it. So my purchase now, 70 bucks, 10 transports. Um, there's nothing crazy for combat other than sometimes what we like to do, and it, some guys do, some guys don't. We go for the strategic bombing of London. We're going to attack two targets. We're going to attack the airbase, and we're going to attack the complex. Bombers are going to go after the complex. Tacticals are going to go after the airbase. This is round two now, right? This is round two. This is Germany two. Yeah. And the reason you want to do this is if you can disable the airbase, and he chooses not to invest money on it because he's trying to build defense, then that takes away his ability to scramble. And then obviously, if he's not going to scramble, that allows you to you know, have more fighters in London as opposed to covering the sea zone. So it's always a good idea if you can to strategically bomb it. And of course, if you're bombing London, even if, let's say, you lose a bomber, which we will in this case, um, you know, you've done, let's say, eight or sometimes whatever, 10 damage, you know, that's however many units he's not going to be able to build there. So let's get to the end of the turn here. Uh, we did the damage. We got three on the airbase, so it's no longer functional. We had eight on the facility, um, which is you know it's pretty detrimental for a guy who's got 33 bucks. Um, I didn't. The rest of this kind of doesn't matter. It's nothing to look at. Uh, let's go to you know UK uh, two. Basically UK two. You know they've pulled their bomber back. They brought their Canadian forces over. They did some six repairs so they can build eight guys. They spent a dollar on the airbase to make that functional, and they threw absolutely everything they could. To London, yeah. um, you know, they're doing everything they can. There's important note: there's no Italian component that's absolutely necessary for London. Although there are all guys sometimes who will try and, and bomb it the first turn if, let's say, they scramble or something like that. Generally speaking, Italy has nothing to do with sea line. Although sometimes this is a fun thing to do if, if it works out that you can take Gibraltar and you've got some extra forces. It's never a bad thing. But even then, you know, UK is going to go before Italy, so it's not going to you're not going to take it with Italy in some surprise maneuver. So they really have nothing to do with it. Right. Forward to G3. Generally G3, that's where you're going to build, um, you know, basically your ground forces, whatever you want for Russia. Uh, and again, Russia hasn't progressed or done anything here, but at this point, they should be reading maximum aggression, sending tanks and trying to be right in your front door. Um, sometimes I like to use all these forces to land as opposed to these, because that way you can have another 10 infantry sort of here. Makes and sense. if they get up to here, you've got the transports to kind of deal with that later. Because, because we could suppose at this point in time, the, yeah. the Soviet player is seeing what's coming down the pike, and they're going to say, "Let's move up our forces up to the yep. to the to the eastern front." So 
it makes sense to kind of reinforce uh, the German forces on the Eastern Front. 100%, 100%, you, you, it's exactly what you do. So anyway, so now we go for the combat. This is sort of the battle. Uh, we, we take a look here, let's just do the battle yeah. calculator. Battle calculator says we're coming in with 34 units. There's your spread. Defender's got 28, right? We do the math, let's call it 2000 times. Boom. <coughs> and your sea line's looking 99%. And you're gonna make forty bucks, right? Very high percentage. Uh, yeah, well, so you're, you're likely to, right? I mean, it's, again, data calculator results. Uh, we actually did quite poorly in our attack, uh, but as you get the concept, again, the farther the spread is here, thirty-four to twenty-eight, like that's a really large spread, right? Yeah, often you're only gonna have one or two sort of additional units, especially if their air base is functional. Like as you can see, I've had to peel out extra fighters to kind of cover the season. Well, I, I can see that you have a you you have thirty-four units German attacking defending 28 units defending your hit yeah. ratio for Germany's 34 yeah defending for the UK's 28 so you have a six yeah. point of yeah. and the big difference too is and, and this is what's really important to, to hone in on the power of the German attack because you've got all this heavy attack you've got oh, 85 correct. power and 85. then you see the defenders is substantially less oh yes and of course that's including their AA guns which they take as as fodder as well right um, so anyway, that's it, it's the simplest way to look at it because even if you say, I don't know, had one less transport and maybe one less fighter, you know, again, you're still 93 percent on 31 to 28, right? So that's not so bad, um, and and so that's that's kind of where the math is. And you know, we lost a bomber in the attack here, right, uh, during the strategic bombing raids. So uh, anyway, that's just the simplest way to sort of to look at the dynamic. You know, you make the decision: Am I going to do it? I'm sorry. And then, just a quick question to because I'm yep. a little bit confused now. Yeah, uh, the power is the actual hit points, right? No, the, the 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 hit points is the amount of hits that you can take. The power is the strength of the unit. So a tank attacks at three, it is power three. Well, it's got a power. Okay, right? so that's, that's right? what so I'm if, if you look at it in terms of uh, you know, if a unit rolled at a six, it would have attack power six, which is one hit essentially. Um, so if you look at you've got a 60 attack power, that's an average of 10 hits. Versus, you know, defenders only got 40 defense power, you know, that's four out of, you know, it's less hits, right? So you, you do the math on that. Yeah, so that, I, just want, I, I just want the clarification because on the yep. screen I saw HP and I assumed the HP was hit points when in actuality it wasn't. It's no, no. So, so here, HP is the hit points. I got 34 units, 34 hit points. So, I was so right. my power is 85. Okay. Uh, so, that, and that's, you know, that's likely how many, again, that's when you add up all your attack power, to, uh, your attack strength, that's the number you get. See, I, I, I always cor correlated that to be the hit points. But yeah. So power and hit points are two different. Uh, yeah. Uh, and there's there's components to this too, where some guys might say, well, I might scramble here, right? I might scramble against one, two, three, four, because I maybe got a better chance of like winning the naval battle. But then, you know, I'm also like, well, I've got five hit points here against your three. I only have to hit you three times, you die, you're going to hit me five. You know, like, eh. Yeah, right? but so if sometimes you air, his air base and his air base is decommissioned. Well, it's not. He repaired it. He paid a dollar or whatever. Well, he repaired. did repair it. Okay. Right? So, so he could scramble here. But Got even it. if he did scramble here, again, we can, we can run a, a battle. Okay. I didn't realize he had repaired it. Okay. All right. right? So the subs essentially doesn't matter. Neither do the transports. So we do the math on this. I'm still 90% chance to win this fight. Right. Um, but that's always something too when you're the British player and say you're trying to defend against it and you're in a jammer. Yeah. This is often something guys will screw up. Or you do something like you scramble anyway. He attacks and let's say you get zero hits and you get two or three. Well, all of a sudden, you know, like this is gone and I don't know, this is gone. For the sake of argument, make it like that. You know, suddenly it's like, Ugh. you can really win a battle here. Right. So it's something to consider anyway. Got it. Um, and, and again, if you're not feeling safe about this, uh, you know, like maybe you want to. I don't know. You, you may want to be more safe about the landing or the naval battle than the landing, but anyway, that's, that's all nuance. Understood. So, yes, but that's that's the basic premise. You go in, you you roll a dice. In this case, we rolled really badly, uh, but we still won, sort of with two still tanks. Won. Yeah. And um, yeah, and we, but you got it. <laughs> yeah, and then of course we built whatever twelve ground units or so. But now, like England's out of the way, um, you know, sometimes the Americans try and if they've got a fleet here, they'll they'll come down here uh, after, right, or they'll you know, because I don't think they can sit here. I can't remember exactly, but depending on the version you play, but it's it's you know it's a pain in the ass for them to to try and get it back. Um, yeah, know, they don't have can... the logistics uh, round uh, three. They don't no. have the logistics set up now. Yeah, and and again, maybe they spent fully on on 
you know, the Europe map. But then by that time too, you know, Japan can easily be running a, a J3 India crush at the same time, which can be a real nasty uh, piece to boot, right? So sometimes too, there's a big question of, well, do I attack with Japan J2? You know, if your plan is to do that, I just would. Even still, it doesn't really, like unless America's really dialed in on a, a total anti sea line plan, which they're never, are, they almost never are, uh, you really don't have much to worry about, in my opinion. So I think you let Japan do what you, Japan needs to do. And if they need to attack J2, they, they attack J2. How about a J1? If you do, if, if you're considering- That's a different uh, video, Detroit. It's a different video, <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, so that, that's, that's again, that's the basics of it. So just to simplify- Thanks for you, setting you, me straight there, buddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no problem, no problem. So to simplify, you, you start your game, you do the typical G1. If they, if you read Sea Lion, because you did really well, you know, you won all your battles, maybe you capped some fighters or something, um, you know, you're feeling hot and they, and they don't build well. Then on G2, you make the decision. And once you made the decision, you got to fully commit. Uh, and so you just go hard. And again, it's just about simple numbers, yours or theirs. That's it. Um, and then everything else is kind of a nuance, you know, how you want to fight here and, and, and whatever you want to do. Um, generally, like I said, I like to give them the north simply because it's, you know, right from here, one, two, or one, two, three, you know, it's easier to reinforce this area. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you, you know, simply because it, it's difficult for them to project here. Uh, and you're going to recover quick, you know, once you get all this money from here, even if the Soviets pick up a territory or two, you know, you just pick up all of the United Kingdom and Italy's, you know, basically going to be able to make ground and do their thing. So, so yeah, that's the line as, as quick as we can. I think that was 20 minutes though. Well, wow, that was fantastic. That was actually pretty fast. I mean, yeah, well, it's just the how to, right? Um, yeah, it's a how. So, and, and again, this is not the perfect, you know, in-game example. I would have preferred to have that, but my, with the updated versions of AAA, a lot of my old games don't work. So that's uh, that's the best I could put together in 20 minutes prior to this video. Uh, very, so. very, well, very well done. So basically, Sea Lion really hinges upon uh, your opponent's uh, actions, what he, was, what he does. Well, it hinges upon two things. It hinges upon your uh, how your battles go. Like, you know, did Germany not lose any planes? Uh, did you win off Canada? You know, so there's some battles. Right. And then, yes, it depends a lot on what UK builds UK won. And uh, generally speaking, if they build everything in London, it's hard to pull off uh, unless they make some other egregious mistake. But, you know, a, a lot of our players that we play against are new to average, right? So you're going to get a lot of guys that still like Toronto or still like to, you know, take other gambles and risks and use up pieces. Uh, or, you know, maybe they scramble into the channel uh, on the first part of the turn, right? Like, these things happen. So yeah, it does, in my opinion, if you want to hold London, you can. Like there's no forcing London uh, against, uh, you know, someone who's absolutely determined to hold it. Uh, the, the thing is, is to pull this card out when they screw up. You know, when they go and they buy this complex early or they got a complex. Yeah, that's base, a, see that's that. a big mistake. Round one, yep. that's an, an invitation for sea line without a doubt. It is, right? But a lot of guys, some guys too like to invite it. And, and I've played a lot of players who think that sea line is a mistake. Like, oh, you know, I'll give them sea line, but it doesn't matter. They're going to lose to Russia and America's just going to get it back. That is a fatal flaw. I have won more games than I can count doing sea line. Yeah, it's a, it's a different game and you've got to play a bit of a naval battle and it's prolonged. Uh, but if America is not fully invested in Europe uh, for like five to seven turns, I would say, to really get London back, like you can keep this going for a long, long, long time. Oh. Um, yeah. How about the Soviet Union? Uh, um, how do you uh, contend now? Now that you've successfully taken London, the UK's out. Obviously, yeah. a, a decent uh, Soviet Union or Russia player will have mobilized his forces, thrown everything up to the front. That's another video, I, I think. But uh, just real quickly, how do you manage that? I mean, what, what's a real uh, a realistic objective at this point in time for Germany? Uh, can Germany go on the offense against the Soviet Union, or are you more thinking uh, defense at this point in time? Well, I mean, you're going to do whatever you can do, but generally, after sea line, it's it's a bit of a you've got to recover, right? Your planes are out of position to, yeah. to help you against the Soviets. The Soviets are almost always going to make some kind of gain, either Romania or Poland, sometimes both, um, and so it's really difficult uh, to keep the Soviets back. Like sometimes what you can do if, if they've kept the buffer and haven't read it properly, you can attack the front line the same turn you attack here, yeah. just because that buys you a turn to sort of reorient. 
Um, generally speaking, if it's the Soviets, you want all your meat and potatoes right here in Eastern Poland. And you really want to be putting pressure on these three territories because you can do that for several turns and yeah. make pretty good dollars. Generally speaking, it's a lot harder for you to make gains up here. And even if you do, you can't quite hold them because of the German logistic flexibility. Uh, although sometimes the Americans can read this and they'll have built bombers or whatever. And maybe they go and they've picked up Ireland at some point. So, you know, they're able to come and blow up your fleet, depending on what you have. Uh, so you, you need to read all that as a German player. So sometimes instead of building ground, you know, you're forced to build an air base in Normandy and extra units yeah. or a carrier or whatever here. Yeah, but you're, so there's different ways to do it. Your German fleet should be intact. You should have all of 11 of your naval transports uh, intact. Uh, assuming if that's the case, then you can backdoor Russia, right? I mean, by the most part. Yeah, know. sometimes, but this backdoor thing almost never happens. And and again, logistically, you, it's a trap. Like, let's say you're, you get your Navy here, you come up here, you land here, never really gets anywhere fast. It doesn't do you any well. Um, right. You know, even if you kind of get in the back door, it's, it's easy for mechanized to block. Um, it, it just doesn't, it's not the greatest, I guess. Yeah. Um, and again, you've put so much stuff up here. So you're with. weakening the center so you could yep. backdoor the, UK, uh, yep. the Soviet Union. And, it's really and again, the, the strategy here for Soviet Union, as soon as you read Sea line it's absolutely max aggression, uh, mobile units, everything you possibly can get to the front. So you're going to be building a lot of mech and tanks. Um, people think mech with Russia is a mistake. I fundamentally disagree. Uh, Russian mobility is absolutely critical. And the way that you need to look at, at least say, I look at. When you say mechanized, you're talking about armor. No, well, there's armor and then there's mechanized. I'm talking about these guys right here, mechanized infantry. Okay, mechanized infantry, right, okay. Yeah. yeah, they are absolutely critical to Russia's success. Uh, okay. Some people would disagree with me, by all means disagree. Um, but if you're gonna be putting lots of pressure on, you can't just do it with tanks, you need some mechanized too. And don't be slow about it. You need to make as many gains here as fast as you can before this bulge starts to come push you back out. Now, this isn't an OOB game, right? This is out of box, second edition, yeah. Yeah, and again, whatever version you're going to play, you're going to have to adjust for it, right? Like, is some of it too? Like, let's say you're playing BBR; it's only an eight-round game. You know, you've got this by G3. Is USA really going to have it back by? You know, like I don't think they're going to get it back by the time the game's tough. over. That'd be tough. Um, no, you know, you've got also, tough assignment keeping these guys out. With a BBR game, if you're buying mechanized infantry. I don't know because you do have the rails, right? So okay. yeah, well, there's that too. And so BBR, you're right, is different that way. Yeah, and so that you have rail that you can move. Stuff out of off. box, yeah. I see. I see your yeah. argument in in uh, OOB yeah. game to buy mechanized infantry. Yeah, yeah, and, and each version, like I said, is, is different. I mean, even even in this uh, with BBR, like your your G1 attacks are different. You know, your bombers can land infantry, so it just changes a lot of dynamics. But it, again, it's just the basics of how do I know when to see line and how does it look. And how do I make sure that I'm ready? And that's where, you know, Normandy comes in, Yugoslavia, so you have the money to do that. And, and again, I'm repeating myself, but the, the premise of this video is just like a basic, this is how to do a sea line on the most basic premise. Uh, so you know, you know what you're doing. All right. All right, my brother. All right. That's all I got for now, man. Thanks for uh, the, the strategy uh, sea line video there, uh, Gargantua. Thank you so much. No uh, I, I really have no other questions. Anything uh, else that uh, you want to may, may want to point out? No, I think uh, our next video should be the J3 India Crush again, just because it's a simple move, and uh, maybe some you know, basic strategy video on how to play India best. Um, that, that's kind of probably what we should do next, and, right. and following that, then maybe we look at some German strategies about how to force the Egypt question. Um, there's a number of ways to do that, which are popular in BBR. That, in that's business. as far as our strategy videos are concerned, but I'm hoping to yeah. maybe get another interview with someone, another prominent sure. member of the community prior yep. to that video. Okay, Sounds so good. I'm going to see if I can alternate. We should bring out Carl, and Carl can give us a, a preamble oh, on how the, there's a new strategy developing, I think it's called the Axis Carrier Push. And it's something about a series of like basically them popping out carriers here and, and more or less like dominating the Atlantic. I, I don't know quite how it's involved, but apparently it's been, that's, that's, that's it's been pretty disruptive on the on the league. So I kind of want to learn more about it. So. Okay, we could definitely go that path without a doubt, without a doubt. All right, guys, uh, Gargantua, my brother, thanks so much. Uh, uh, it's a lot of fun as always. 
first, just, just a little bit of housekeeping here. I would like to take this opportunity to uh, thank Corporal Clegg because he's been very helpful uh, to us here and the channel with uh, the software issues that I've been having. Uh, I've been learning how to, uh, what is it, uh, record videos from my uh, computer and not how to edit them. And he's been very uh, helpful to us. So that Corporal, if you're listening, thank you so much, my brother. You've been uh, just fantastic uh, as far as helping us here at the channel. Thank you so much once again. And guys, uh, that's about it for this episode. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, it's, uh, we're now like a little bit shy of just 20 sites, 26 minutes uh, since we started. So I want to keep the videos as short and concise as possible. Guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, look forward to the next video. As I like to say, don't forget to bunker down and play. Till next time. Hey, all right, guys, welcome back. I just wanted to add, there's one more thing, sometimes I like to do. It's a really cheap trick when you pull off a sea line and really screw the Americans, it's as simple as this. You land your bombers usually after uh, London, or if you've really got good dice on London and you've got the free bomber, strongly recommend you bomb this naval base at Gibraltar, assuming the Italians have not taken it, uh, simply because this is what ends up happening. Americans come down with whatever fleet elements that they have, they come here, the Americans can never repair the base because it's uh, UK and they need UK money and obviously you've got their capital uh, and they can't build one in Morocco either. So suddenly that spares you from having to defend Rome or Italy simply because the Americans would have to come through the canal in order to, to do anything. Uh, at the same time, it spares you from having to defend West Germany, season 112 or Norway because uh, the Americans simply can't advance. They also can't return. So like their logistical shock is totally screwed up. Um, and it's an absolute nightmare that will cost them usually three or four turns to recover. Um, and it's just, a, it's a real nice poison pill if you can kind of swing it and pull it off. And again, you only need to do three damage to that base. Um, so, you know, sometimes you'd be able to just, you, you, you bomb London on the following turn. You know, if there's not enough air power here or whatever, you can go do that. Or if you built a carrier, you can do it. And so I just uh, wanted to throw that one in there for you guys as a nice little screw you maneuver. All righty. Okay. Something Thanks, guys. Up. All right. Have a good night. Good night.